Hello everybody, welcome to the United Stands, I'm Mark Goldbridge and this is a brutally honest review of Andre Anana and the problems and positives around his tenure as Manchester United's number one goalkeeper because fundamentally I think the comments are going to be very interesting on this. We're going to go through some stats and we're going to go through some issues but fundamentally I think that there has to be an acceptance that this needs to work. It has to work because there is no money for a new goalkeeper and even if Ten Hag is unsuccessful, there is no new money for a goalkeeper. So why was he signed? Well, he was signed to be an expansive ball-playing goalkeeper, a sweeper-keeper, but we haven't seen that. And at the moment, I think you'd have to say, why was he signed? He looks uh, low on confidence, low on influence um, and lost effectively at the moment. I think you're all going to have your issues and your positives. But before we get into the stats, because it's well known that um, he's not doing very well this season. He's not a good shot stopper this season. Was he a good shot stopper last season? But when I look at Anana, I think my honest assessment is I want him to succeed. And I think there are reasons why he's not succeeding that are beyond his control. But there are things within his control that, that, that sort of jump out at me. I don't think he's very good at leaving his line. I don't think on corners, he's very confident at, you know, punching the ball or, or, or even trying to catch the ball. I don't think even on shots, positionally, he goes too close to his line. And I think I know why that is as well. Um, I think that you could argue that um, his, uh, you know, he, he kicks the ball long too much as well. And I think we'll show that with the stats in a moment. I think his wrist work is not great. Uh, I'm not telling him to go and get himself on new porn or anything like that, but I'm saying like, you know, when he saves a shot, how many times is he tipping it around for a corner or out of danger or how many times is he palming it back into danger? And that's what I mean by wrist work. Um, and fundamentally, I would say that is there not a case that when you look at him at Inter, is Anana like Edison? Now, hear me out in the sense that he's a good goalkeeper in a good team. And what I mean by that is, I know the words De Gea are going to come into this, but De Gea had his limitations with distribution. But what De Gea did over 10 years was produced constant worldies. You know, if he was an outfield player, he'd be hitting a 40-yard screamer every few games. You know, worldies. And, and that's what De Gea did well. If you look at De Gea's time at Manchester United and the amount of Player of the Year awards he got, Predominantly, that was in bad Man United sides. He was a great keeper in bad United sides. That's what De Gea was because he was a brilliant shot stopper. Anana's not a brilliant shot stopper. And De Gea stood out because of that. But if you put Anana in a Man City side, he'd probably be a good goalkeeper. But I don't think De Gea would be a good goalkeeper in a Man City side because of his distribution. So that's a bit of a head mess. But because everyone would go, well, you put De Gea... If De Gea is a good keeper in a bad side, he'll be a great goalkeeper in a good side. It doesn't work like that because I think Anana's attributes work well in a good side where you're not having lots of shots against you, where you are playing a higher line, where you're predominantly there to pass the ball. Um, I think Anana's a good goalkeeper in a good side. The problem is he's playing in a bad defensive side at the moment and is being exposed for his weaknesses. So we will delve into that, of course. Uh, there was a few other things from comments that I wanted to bring in as well. But let's start off with some of the stats. So I want to start off with passes per 90 because this to me, I think it's it, when we talk about he's a bad goalkeeper at the moment. And I think we have to acknowledge that he might be a bad goalkeeper. He might be an average goalkeeper. But he's certainly not a good goalkeeper at the moment at Manchester United. We also have to acknowledge that we've got a bad defence. Um, and when we're looking at that, you've got to say that if we can improve certain things, i.e., I think that if you had Rodri in a Man United side uh, who's got the ability as a six to drop in and say, give me the ball and wants the ball in situations where it's uncomfortable to receive it, then Anana would pass out from the back a lot more. Um, I think that, uh, especially over last season, uh, people run away. They don't want the ball. So he ends up having to kick it long and play a risky pass. And this is something I've I've only taken the first three games of the season and we're only talking about goalkeepers in the Premier League that have started three games. So we're looking at a very narrow pool here, but it's relevant because we're looking at this season. I think last season's got too many um, valuable excuses to start talking about his passing rate and this, that and the other. We're talking about this season where it's time to deliver. So 
Long passes per 90 in the Premier League at the moment. It's incredible how many Jordan Pickford's doing. Um, 16. Um, with an accuracy of 69%. He is number one. Number two is Sells with uh, 10 and an accuracy of 75%. Um, Anana is actually fifth. He is fifth for long passes in the Premier League this season. He's done. Not, he's averaging 9.5 per game with a 61% accuracy. So he's not very good at it, and he's fifth. He's kicking the ball long. Comparatively, the bottom three goalkeepers for long passes are Vicario at Spurs, Edison at City, and uh, Sanchez at Chelsea. So all th and, and and all three of those teams, you would say, are teams that want to pass out from the back. So it's a bit of a worry, a bit of a worry stylistically that Anana this season is fifth for long passes in the Premier League. When you think that there are 20 teams in the Premier League and there's a lot of teams that, you know, probably do just want to get rid of the ball, we our goalkeeper is kicking it long quite a lot and not very accurately as well. So I think that goes back to style. That goes back to tactics. That goes back to system. Why is our goalkeeper being forced to kick the ball a lot long when that's not what we're meant to be about? And that's certainly not we bought what we bought him for. I mean, right here, right now, Anana's kicking the ball long a lot and not that accurately. Well, this is one of the things we criticised De Gea about. So you'd go, well, we may as well have kept bloody De Gea if we're going to kick it long because he'll save more shots than Anana. So we have to stylistically change and play to Anana's strengths, 100%. Because positive-wise, when it comes to passes per 90 so far this season, Anana's number one. Anana's played 35 passes this season with an 89% accuracy. Second is Flecken of Brentford with 31 passes. And third is Vicario with 30. So Anana's played more passes than any other goalkeeper in the Premier League this season. But when you are, um, you know, when 30% of them is long, and I've just realised on the previous point, it's not 95 per game. It's 9.5 so far this season. So 30% of his passes are long passes. So that that's problematic and, and that's stylistic. So Anana wants the ball. That's a good thing. You know, he's played more passes than anybody this season in the goalkeeping arena. But a third of them are long. So he, my positive is he wants the ball we just got to limit the long pass. And why is he going long? He's being told to go long. I don't see any reason why we would go long. We haven't really got anybody who's going to win it. I think he's going long because the press is coming in on him and he's just getting rid of it, which I don't blame him. So we've got to find those passing lanes. We've got to have players who want the ball off him because that's ultimately why we bought him. And 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 and, and that's a big thing. Um, talking about uh, saves, I think this is absolutely huge, and this is going to be the thing that where 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 we talk about Anana and it's problematic, because before I tell you uh, how many you know how poor his save ratio is this season, and it's really bad, and we'll compare it to those who've done well. I've said this for a while again. I look at Anana, and I'm not a goalkeeper, but I spend time with like Watto, who was England goalkeeping coach. Ben Foster's played in the Premier League, um, and I. I think goalkeeping is 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 definitely a specialist area, and I don't think some people understand it. I mean, I've seen I've seen pundits on the TV who've played the game at a high level, and they talk about keepers should have done better there. And you watch it, and you go, "Well, no, they shouldn't." You just don't understand goalkeeping. And I think with Anana, when I look at him, he is he's like he's been down the gym. He's he, to me, he's like a triangle. He's like bulky at the top, and and sort of goes down like that. And I think as a goalkeeper, when you look at goalkeepers, David De Gea, Edwin van der Sar, Nick Pope, Raya, you don't really see these athletic sort of bulky goalkeepers because naturally to me, I think, well, that surely makes them less agile. Now, that might be unfair because, you know, you can have a muscly person who's, you know, more agile than anybody. Um, but it also backs up my theory with Anana that he's not a good shot stopper because he struggles to get down low. You think about that Cole Palmer goal at Old Trafford last season. That's not a lot of power on that. And I couldn't believe that Anana didn't save it. And there was two factors in why he didn't save that. And, and there's two factors, again, on probably why he didn't save the Salah shot. Uh, some goalkeepers won't save it, but you'd expect a top-class goalkeeper that you spent £50 million on to save some of these shots. He doesn't save shots very often. And I think that's because of two reasons as well. One, I think he struggles to get down, and that might be because of athleticism. He might be a bit top-heavy in relation to he's quite muscly. Two, 
he spends a lot of time close to his goal line. Now, I know this, and I'm sure you know this, because if you've been down the park or you've played in goal or whatever, you know it's about simple maths. If a shot from the edge of the box is taken by somebody, the further you get away from it, the more time you've got to adapt to it. And I don't think Anana anticipates those dangers at all. I think Anana goes back to his goalkeeping line because it gives him longer to, you know, see the shot coming. The problem with that is top goalkeepers actually take a step closer because simple maths again, if you've got a space that's that big and you stand on the line, that's a bigger area for, for the ball to go into. If you step forward, you're closing the angles off. You get less time to react, but you cover more of your goal. Anana takes that step backwards, leaves a bigger target, makes it a harder save. And I think he's doing it because he doesn't trust his reactions. He doesn't trust his anticipation. And he spends a lot of time, you know, very, very deep, which to me is not a very confident shot stopper. And that feeds into the stats, because when you look at this season, um, conceded goals per 90, Pickford 3, Anana 1.5 is second. But more importantly, we're talking about save rate here. Best goalkeeper in the league this season, Raya, has a 90% save rate. Now, remember, this is based on goalkeepers that have started three games. There's only 16 Premier League goalkeepers that have started all three games. So Raya is number one with 90% save rate, starting all three games. Number two is Pope, 86% save rate. And number three is Flecken, 80% save rate. Uh, Anana is 15th out of 16 with a 50% save rate. Now, again, people will go, yeah, but you know what? Raya plays for Arsenal. He's probably not uh, had as many shots as Anana has had against him. Raya has had 10 shots against him. Anana has had 10 shots against him. Flecken's had about 21. So for me, Flecken's got the best save rate because it's 80% with 21 shots. Raya's is 90% with 10 shots. So Flecken's been more busy. But Raya, 10 shots, 90% save rate. Anana, 10 shots, 50% save rate. So it's not like Anana's getting loads of shots against him. He's had the same as Raya, but he's got half almost the save rate. He's just not a good shot stopper at the moment. That's the bottom line with Anana. And as Manchester United are a football team that, as we hear, is going through transition, I would say we've got the wrong goalkeeper at the moment. Some would argue, well, no, if we want to become a ball-playing goal, uh, ball playing team, then we've got the right goalkeeper. And I do understand that. But over the last 18 months, we haven't done that. So we've had the wrong goalkeeper. Until we start seeing a style of play that suits Anana, we've got the wrong goalkeeper. I don't see Anana outside our box sweeper-keeping. I don't see Anana, you know, passing out from the back, retaining possession. He's kicking it long. So at the moment... He's a bad shot stopper. He's kicking the ball too long. He's not sweeper keeping. He's not coming off his line to claim the ball. He's standing too far back for shots. There's a lot going against Anana at the moment. And I stand by what I was saying before. I think in a good side, he's a good goalkeeper. But in a bad side, it's not the right goalkeeper. And it's and it's logical, isn't it? If you're if you're Southampton and you've got the choice between David De Gea and Anana. Even though Southampton want to play out from the back, I would say David De Gea because you are going to concede a lot of shots and a lot of goals. So you need a really good shot stopper. That's what you need. A ball-playing goalkeeper is all fine. Southampton are averaging 65% possession a game and over 600 passes, which is remarkable. And Anana would help you do that. But you've not won a game. You're conceding loads of shots. David De Gea would be the answer. And I think at Man United over the last year, we would have been better off keeping De Gea. I have sympathy completely with Anana. It's not his fault. I think the blame here rely, lies, unfortunately and uncomfortably, it lies with the manager because he decided to throw De Gea out for free and wanted Anana for £50 million. And this is where I think if you had Dan Ashworth and Barada, that never would have happened because they would have seen this problem and gone... If things go wrong, Eric, we're stuck with a goalkeeper where we're not playing out from the back and he's not a great shot stopper. Everything needs to go right for this to work. Um, and that's the challenge now is to make this work. How do we make this work? Because it's not as simple as going flop, get rid of him, he's a joke. That's not the solution. 
we have to look at how we make this work. Because although it's a brutally honest review, and we shouldn't hide from that with any player, certain players, we've got to find solutions. You know, with Marcus Rashford, he's here for the season. We need him to start scoring goals. With Casemiro, he's here for the season. We need to find a way where he benefits Manchester United. We can't throw these people onto the onto the scrap heap. We have to find a solution. And with Anana, the only solution on a positive sense is a positive solution. The only way Anana's going to work is if we actually move up the pitch. If we actually allow him to sweep a keep. If we actually allow him to have the ball and play out from the back, which is a massive positive. So Although this is a brutal review of Anana's weaknesses over the last 18 months, the only way this works is if we play better. The only way Anana becomes a success is if we become a good team. Because Anana in a good team will be a good goalkeeper. But in a bad team, he won't be a good goalkeeper like De Gea because he's not a shot stopper. He will be a bad goalkeeper in a bad team. But if we're a good team, I think he'll become a good goalkeeper. So that means sweeper keeping. That means playing out from the back on the floor into players that want the ball. That is what we must do because the stats don't lie on this. He is not a good shot stopper. He is not very commanding in his box. So if we're going to put ourselves under pressure and we're going to concede shots, then we're going to concede goals. We need to up our possession. We need to lower our defensive line. Not, not, no, we don't. We need to press out. We need to lower the amount of shots that we're conceding. We need to start to dominate the ball because Anana is a possession-based goalkeeper. So we need to be possession. And you're only going to do that if you've got players ahead of him that can play possession-based football. Because in the modern game, we all know it's not as easy as being a goalkeeper and the opposition stand on the halfway line and let you pass it about. They're going to press you really high up the pitch. So you need players that can do that as well. Um, and I think that that's massively, massively important when it comes to Anana. Um, there was one other thing I wanted to say as well. Um, I think th I think ultimately the, the, the if I'm saying what Anana's problems are, I think he's I think he goes way too deep because he's not quick enough at getting down. So he wants to see the ball for longer, but that makes the shot hard, harder because, you know, these players are going to put it in the bottom corner and he can't reach it. The further you go back to your line, the further away a dive to the bottom corner is. You can't make it. You've got to be taking a step forward and he takes a step back. I think he goes long too long because he probably hasn't got the players around him to take the ball off him. Uh, and I think his ante anticipation, command of the box um, is not very, very good. And ultimately, he's not a very good shot stopper. But I also think, and it might surprise people, that the comparison with David De Gea is unfair and irrelevant. David De Gea is gone. That was not Anana's decision. He's not the CEO of Man United. He's not the manager. David De Gea was replaced with Anana. We can't keep harking back. We are also, I even agree, we had to move on from De Gea at some point. I think we did it too soon, but we did have to move on from De Gea. The same way that Arsenal have moved on from Ramsdale. It was harsh, but they did it because they wanted to play a certain way. We have to play a certain way. In that sense, Anana is an upgrade on De Gea because he can play that way. But unfortunately, we're not playing that way. And that's the solution here. We can't compare to De Gea. In shot stopping, De Gea is better. But we want a style of play. And the style of play we really want is possession. And if we want to play possession, we have a goalkeeper to do that. And I don't think we can truly judge Anana's uh, capabilities until we start playing a possession-based game and dominating the opposition. And if we never do that, Anana will be a flop. But if we do do that, there is a chance that he can still be a success. Um, what we utilise him for at the moment, you may as well have Pickford in goal. Like, long balls, Pickford's used to that, and he's a better shot stopper. And that's the problem at the moment. If you want a harsh truth, the way we've played over the last year, we'd be better off with Jordan Pickford. And I don't even rate Jordan Pickford because he's a better shot stopper and he's better at kicking it long. But if we want to play like Man City and we want to play like Liverpool, then we have to do that. And then we've got a goalkeeper that can do that. If we become a good team, he will become a good goalkeeper. But we can't rely on him to be a good goalkeeper in a bad defence because that's not his strength. Commanding the box when you're under pressure, making big saves when you're under pressure. That's not an honour. An honour is commanding the ball in a possession-based team, keeping the possession in a possession-based team, getting out of his box as a sweeper-keeper in a team that's going to get counted on. 
we must change the style of play if we're going to make the most of an Arna. Get your comments in below. What are your thoughts? Make sure you smash a like on the video and subscribe. Oh, and don't forget our live show in Birmingham. The tickets are going very, very quickly. It's a week on Monday. If you are in the UK and you want to come down, it's probably going to be our only live show of the year. Get your tickets. You can bring your books and get them signed as well. And uh, it's at uh, a Birmingham Toka, which is like a, a football event place where you can play games and all sorts of stuff like that. It's going to be a fantastic evening. It'll be great to see you there. Get your tickets through the link in the description. I'll speak to you all later. Smash a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Take care. Match day tomorrow. Let's have it.